So the last full length Nintendo Direct was actually just a little over a year ago on September 4th, 2019. Like I noted in the intro today, is September 5th, 2019. And since this last event, if you go around like any social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, YouTube comments, etc., etc., uh, whenever there's any Nintendo trailer or anything of the like, there seems to be this general feeling among fans that there is a drought, so to speak. Now, obviously, this term is in reference to a real-world drought where, you know, communities will run out of water, and they're, like, begging for, like, any water they can get, and it's super deadly and sad, and, you know, it's a bad comparison to make in general. Uh, in this case, gamers are more or less begging and pleading and hoping for a big, full Nintendo Direct because there hasn't been a full-length one since September 4th, 2019. Now notice, I put a special emphasis on the point that it is a full-length Direct, because basically what I want to do here today is refute this case of being made that there's a drought, and it's like, come on, Nintendo, we gotta have a Direct. I need it so badly, right? Um, and I want to give my impressions on this idea here. Uh, now, at the same time, there's another piece that I think will hopefully shine a pretty heavy light on why people are so antsy about having a uh, full-length Nintendo Direct. And it's actually because of, well, now, something that recently happened. I cannot believe that I was writing it this on, what, it was like the second, and that was... That was Wednesday. No, it, it was... I was writing this on the 1st, on Tuesday. What am I saying? And then... I was thinking about this. This year, I think the main reason why people are so antsy is because it is the Super Mario 35th anniversary. And ever since the year started, there's been all kinds of speculation about there's going to be some type of Super Mario All-Stars 2. So for those of you who don't know, Super Mario All-Stars is an SNES game that remade all four of the original NES Mario titles. Uh, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers 3, and then it was the game that brought Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels to the West for the first time. So basically this Mario All-Stars 2 that's been speculated about since like January uh, was supposed to be a compilation of all of the 3D Mario games that led up to Super Mario Odyssey. So we're talking about Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, uh, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy 2, and Super Mario 3D Land. Now you may notice uh, Super Mario 3D World is not included in that list. Um, and that's because it's it was supposedly supposed to have the deluxe treatment, not too dissimilarly from uh, the recently announced Pikmin 3 Deluxe, and uh, another example would be like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, now there were some claims along the way that this all Stars 2, uh, it could have been like a collection of basic ports, kind of like uh, the Kirby 25th anniversary collection on the Wii. Uh, but others said it was like the games are going to be fully remade from the ground up. Uh, so, as you can imagine, Mario fans, including myself, uh, could get pretty hyped about this, even if, if it's just an idea, right? Now, admittedly, I was not super hyped about it necessarily because I only really get hyped when there's actual definite hey this is happening I can show you this thing and it's real but that's just me people get hyped based on ideas apparently um, now I would say this is not the only game that was causing people to be um, direct beggars but I would argue that it was the biggest culprit of it. And you know, wouldn't you know it, like I just said, I wrote and planned this whole topic, and then that direct 
comes out. Ugh. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna you know bonus talk about the Super Mario 35th anniversary direct, but I still want to address this topic because regardless of that, I still think this is important. Why do I not believe there's a Nintendo Direct drought? Well, uh, that's because since the last full Direct, there have been a ton of other Directs either about specific games. Heck, I covered one on this show, the Animal Crossing New Horizons Direct. There were presentations about games, also known as the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate presentations, two of which I covered, um, the Byleth and... Min Min presentations, I believe since that direct, that was, well, immediately following it was the Banjo presentation, and then not too long after was the Terry presentation. So, that's four more presentations given by Nintendo since that full direct. Um, and then there were mini directs as well. Uh, let's see, I wrote down everything on here, I, I just discussed the uh, four Smash Brothers Ultimate DLC presentations, and the two I covered. Uh, in January 2020, there was also a Pokemon Direct, and that announced a remake of the first Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and the DLC content for, er, the DLC content, how redundant, the downloadable content for Pokemon Sword and Shield. I just talked about uh, how in February there was the Animal Crossing New Horizons Direct, and since then... There was a Nintendo Direct Mini in March. I didn't cover this. I we're going to be talking about one of the games from it. And I would actually argue well, it isn't even fair to call it a Mini Direct because it was 25 minutes when the last full Direct was really about only 15 minutes longer. Um, and that Direct showed up a whole bunch of things. There was Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Uh, there are a bunch of ports coming from 2K. There's a little more information given out about the New Horizons updates. Uh, there's a Ring Fit Adventure update announced. Uh, that direct revealed Good Job, which is another independent game that Nintendo published. Uh, it was shown that, you know, Smash Brothers' next fighter would be from ARMS uh, before Min Min was announced. Uh, we heard about more uh, about some Japanese games like Trials of Mana and Ninjala. Uh, and then there was a highlight for me, which we're going to be covering a little bit later, the announcement of Clubhouse Games' 51 Worldwide Classics. Now, am I going to come out here and say that to most people, these reveals are like, whoa, mind-blowing, amazing, I just had to sit through that. No. But that is not the claim being made. The issue is whether or not there is a drought. That there's just been no information announced. Uh, in late July, and similarly in late August, Nintendo has published uh, direct mini partner showcases, which are both presentations discussing exclusively new uh, third-party games coming in the next few months to Switch. Uh, there was also some updates, including one to uh, Cadence of Hyrule, which, while it is, it's like this weird second-party sort of thing. So that's still a Nintendo game I want to point out, though. Um, I thought the second partner showcase of the two was a lot better than the first, uh, if only because it included Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, which is awesome. Uh, but suffice to say, people were left pretty flat from these in general. And that gets me into my thoughts on this situation. The problem people have here is not that they feel that there's a drought of directs. Because if there had been nothing announced since the last full direct a year ago, maybe I could agree with that premise. Maybe I could. But there have been at least six presentations given since then. I think it actually, well, let's see, there's the four Smash Brothers ones, the two mini directs, and the two partner directs, and now I guess the new Super Mario 35th direct. So that's nine different presentations since that last full direct. If I had to take a guess, and I've pointed that out before, the issue really is that there has not been anything until Super Mario 35th direct, I guess, that was super amazingly earth-shattering announced. 
Now, Nintendo fans get, like, super duper duper hyped about Nintendo Direct because something amazing always seems to be announced. At least that's perception. It's not true in practice. I can tell you there are plenty of times where there are full-length directs and people still come out of it flat. I mean, I can say so for myself. Like, I remember um, one of the later directs in 2017. I wish I knew the exact one. Like, there was a whole bunch of time dedicated to Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It's a great game. I just don't care. That would be a direct that probably fell pretty flat for me since it spent so much time on Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And, you know, for some reason, despite that, fans just seem to think that it's like, there's no such thing as a bad direct and I have to have one. Maybe that's a little... Okay, maybe that is a little bit of an extreme statement. I guess I, sh I shouldn't necessarily say that. Uh, but that's still the perception I have. And, you know, I totally understand why people want to hear more about Metroid Prime 4 and the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And if you want my honest opinion, <laughs> before it was, you know, now revealed, I had... Basically zero confidence that Super Mario All-Stars 2 would happen. But alas, I guess I should discuss what happened in that Direct. So let's get the big thing out of the way. Indeed, not Super Mario All-Stars 2, but rather Super Mario 3D All-Stars is real. And I think it's pretty interesting. Full disclosure, I do already have it pre-ordered, um, despite you know, all of that disdain. You have to realize I am a still a Mario nut if the picture there and I don't know how well you can see the amiibo display in the back right now, but I I I, I, I quite enjoy Mario. Yeah, in Super Mario World and Donkey Kong Country are my first two games. I figure those are plenty of clues to note that I would probably order that right away. Now where the real the reality diverges from the leaks is that the collection only includes Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. Why is Galaxy 2 not in there? I know that I'm not the first person to say it, but that is a glaring omission. Now, I'm also sad to see that Super Mario 3D Land is also missing, but I figure most people don't care. Especially because this is a six the dollar collection. And they probably should have at least included one more game, probably Galaxy 2. I'll still, you know, be happy with my purchase. Um, but I do have to note uh, that the reaction now to this collection, since people know what it actually is, is much more mixed than the theory of, oh my goodness, it's going to be a 3D All-Stars 2, especially because of, you know, a little bit more information that's, that I'm going to talk about here about the, uh, these versions of the game. Um, I wish they would have actually included Super Mario 64 DS, because it's obviously the superior version of Super Mario 64, and I do wish that there were more enhancements to the games. I like that Sunshine and Galaxy now have full HD and widescreen support, and they figured out how to do the, the pointer for Galaxy and the like. Uh, and while 64 is, in, is still in 4x3, it's in HD. But uh, my main concern is that the games are basically just ports. That they're not actual remakes, which is what the original Super Mario All-Stars were. Graphical, for sure, remakes. But they had some gameplay tweaks made as well. Uh, so the way that this is being done makes me think that none of the salient gameplay issues in each game is going to be touched. Which, is, again, is just another reason why I wish 64 DS were included as opposed to the original Super Mario 64. Side note, this is going to be the first copy of the original N64 version of Super Mario 64 that I'll own. So I'm not even coming into this necessarily thinking, like having played both and thinking that, well, 64 is so much worse. I'm actually coming at this, just looking at it and saying, well, I've played 64 DS. And, regard and uh, regardless of the fact that it is the only one I've played, obviously having four characters and 30 more stars and 
a better presentation is way, 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 way more beneficial than, uh, or is way, it, to me, those are just better selling points, I guess is what I'll say. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, I want to make sure, do I point this out uh, later on first? Because there is one other pretty important issue. No, I don't point it out. So let me talk about it here. Uh, for some reason, this collection, so it goes on sale on September 18th, but it's only available until the end of March of 2021, both physically and I'm, my understanding is digitally as well. I'm not sure why. That's a very confusing move, and ultimately it's going to lead to a lot of piracy, because uh, people are just going to try to like download the ROM for Super Mario 3D All-Stars once they can't easily buy it anymore. Nintendo, why? Just keep selling it. It's free money. But I digress. Uh, similarly, the original SNES Super Mario All-Stars is now available via SNES Online. Uh, I, my first copy was the uh, Wii version that celebrated Mario's 25th anniversary. Uh, but, you know, I've played some of the Super 16-bit Super Mario Brothers just because it's there. Uh, Super Mario 3D World is indeed making a comeback to switch in the form of Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. We don't know much about this expansion. Uh, the trailer shows like a new dark and stormy, very sprawling landscape, which is not how most levels were in Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U. Um, so I'm assuming that that's part of the Bowser's Fury portion of the game. And on the one hand, this is another Wii U port, which, trust me, is going to be its own segment later on. Not today, but some other time. Um, but unlike a bunch of other ones, this might actually be one I pick up, shockingly. Uh, because the game description on the eShop notes that this game is playable online. Uh, now, I, I want to make sure that I see this in action first, though, because uh, before I decide, $60 is put down in this game. Uh, because... Not even because of the quality of the online play, but just to make sure that they are actually saying we are going to have a four-player online 3D Mario game. And not just the same sort of inter integration with the online. Because you have to remember, the Wii U version had online play too. But it was just Miiverse posts and um, having me fairy ghosts in the levels that would show you how that person played with their character. And like I said, I don't even care if the gameplay experience is as bad or worse than in Super Mario Maker 2, because to me, being able to play through Super Mario 3D World with three strangers online is a significant amount, or is a significant enough difference to warrant uh, double dipping to me. Uh, and one other element that was not included in the Direct, but was uh, revealed, I believe, in a tweet, was... Two new amiibo figures, Cat Mario and Cat Peach. Uh, we don't know what they're going to be used for. And, I mean, regardless of whether I get Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, I'm going to make sure to get the figures. Uh, just because, especially because I am way behind on many of the Super Mario ones, and they're stupid expensive now. And I don't want to have that happen to Cat Mario and Cat Peach as well to me. Um, the next announcement seemed to shockingly be a bunch of people's highlight over the direct, which was Super Mario Bros. 35, which is like if you put together Super Mario Brothers and Tetris 99, or any other Battle Royale, um, where the premise is basically that you and 34 other players are running through Super Mario Brothers on the NES until one player is alive at the end. And as you're playing, if you defeat any enemies, so you jump on a Goomba, kick away a Koopa Troopa, you fireball, spiny, whatever. Those defeated enemies are sent to other players, and you can spend coins on, like, random power-ups. Maybe it's a mushroom, maybe it's a fire flower, maybe it'll be a, an invincibility star. And I think this is... It, I, it'll probably be pretty fun. I enjoy Tetris 99 to an extent. Um, I feel like this is going to be more fun, because I enjoy Mario more than I enjoy Tetris in general. Um, but I'll wait to give my actual thoughts on the game when it comes out on October 1st. And again, like Super Mario 3D All-Stars, this game will not be playable post 
March 2021. This is also a Nintendo Switch Online exclusive. So if you're not a Switch Online member, I mean, it makes sense that it would have to be a Switch Online exclusive because you have to play it online. Uh, you're not going to be able to play the game ever. And that is very sad and terrible for preservation. Because, uh, I mean, A, this could be very fun. I'm thinking it's going to be very fun. But I don't want to make any rash claims yet, especially not knowing how the online experience will be. Um, but I, I figure I'll enjoy it. But there has, there ha it has to be playable past March. I mean, come on, Nintendo, really? Really? Why? There's, no, there's not even really a good reason stated for this or for Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Let's talk a little Mario Kart. So there were two Mario Kart announcements made in the Direct. The first was the little announcement that on Mario Kart Tour, that's the mobile game, uh, there's going to be a new event celebrating Super Mario Kart and the SNES, including a 16-bit Mario character and the return of Donkey Kong Jr., also in 16-bit form as a character. Um, but the big announcement, and one that I'm, like, tepidly excited for, was Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, which to me is the equivalent of a Mario Kart Nintendo Labo kit. So for $100, uh, consumers can purchase an RC car of Mario or Luigi that connects to the Switch and is then controlled by it. And the car has a camera facing the front out of the back to show the real world on your console. And basically what the trailer shows is that it's not super clear. Once you read it, it makes a little bit more sense. Um, you have to place four little gates on the ground in your house. And then you connect the console and the car. And you'll have Lakitu. That's the, that's the guy in the cloud. He usually does the 3, 2, 1, go. Uh, paints the tires. And so then the player drives their toy Mario RC or Luigi RC around, and that designs the track. With the only limit, of course, being that you have to go through the four gates. I'm sure there's more limits, we just don't know what they are yet. Um, and then the player is able to race a bunch of CPU, only like Koopalings and Bowser Jr. for some reason, and another player, though, if someone else has the other character car in their home. So you could have Mario and Luigi and all the CPUs. And while I think this is a great idea, uh, I'm going to use a little wishful thinking here and wait for a price drop or sale on this game. It's neat. I think it'll be fun. I don't have enough hard floor available to me. And like I've pointed out, um, and like how a bunch of other have pointed out as well, I'm not sure how much of a lifespan this game has because it seems too simple you know it's not like mario kart like mario kart 8 where you have tracks made for you and you can play online in those tracks and you can play single player and you can play time trials and grand prix this is like one time i made this track and now i can't play it again and putting down a hundred dollars for that is probably too much for how little it could be used and, and it's the same sort of reason why i've only ever bought labo kits when they've been on sale now the last major aspect uh that i want to talk about that i'm also definitely pre-ordering is the super mario brothers game and watch i have always wanted a game and watch but they're like 100 to 200 dollars which is way too expensive for that teeny tiny of a game um and technically, this isn't a Game & Watch in the vein of a standard Game & Watch because it's not, you know, an LCD game where it goes like, uh, deep, 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 something like that. Um, it, it's still at least like a kitschy little handheld. And uh, it includes, of course, Super Mario Brothers on the NES, Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels on the NES, uh, it includes a new Mario version of Game & Watch Ball, and it has a clock with a bunch of different animations, I believe. 35 animations. Um, and that's pretty neat. I'm not sure how much it's going to be. Um, it's coming out in November. And I actually want to point out, I feel like there's a lot of missed potential with this Game & Watch as well, because uh, 
there already was a Game & Watch Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, there's already a Game & Watch from the 80s of the same name, and that game isn't included in Game & Watch Super Mario Brothers. I mean, sure, that's probably a bit of a, you know, a deep cut for most of the people who are going to buy this, but I just think it would have been neat if you're like, you're including, if it's a Game & Watch of Super Mario Brothers, include Game & Watch Super Mario Brothers. Um, and funnily enough, the final Game & Watch is actually called Mario the Juggler, which is basically just Game & Watch Ball, but it's Mario. <laughs> And I'm kind of surprised that Nintendo didn't just recycle that and made a brand new Mario sort of thing for Ball. But, you're, like, regardless, the product as it stands is pretty cool and rad, and I am excited for sure. Um, there are also a bunch of just a little announcements in the Direct, like some merchandise that I don't really care about. Mario shoes. Mario Monopoly whoop de doo Um, there were a few exciting things, though, yet that were tiny to mention. Um, uh, the Switch eShop has a little Mario makeover right now, and the 64 Mario runs during loading screens, and there's a red tinge, and it's kind of... It's nice to see the Switch eShop finally getting a little personality when it's had none, not even any music. Um, a few more games are going to have some Mario tie-ins. There's going to be a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate tournament themed around Mario. Uh, there are going to be furniture items for Animal Crossing New Horizons in 2021 themed around Mario. Uh, there's going to be a Super Mario Maker 2 Ninji speedrun course. Um, and to me, the biggest new uh, Mario tie-in, if only because it shows that Pearl and Marina lied to us, is a brand new Splatoon 2 Splatfest complete with t-shirts for purchase leading up to it based on are you team invincibility superstar or team grow big from a mushroom ha <laughs> ha so that was the super mario 35th direct i feel like there is a lot less begging going on right now because of it which frankly and i can't believe i'm gonna say this and i'm sure people are gonna think of me as a hypocrite really disappoints me why because this is not what people asked for. You cannot say now that, oh, it's fine. Because y what you've been saying is that there has been no direct. Implying that there's been no full-length direct. And for whatever reason, the presentations prior to this were not sufficient announcements. Like I said in the start, there could have been nothing at all. There could have been nothing at all. And this... And what we had along the way was still something. And granted, I would say out of all of the presentations so far, the Mario 35th one was probably the best. But it still doesn't meet people's criteria. And that's just frustrating. Uh, final thoughts, though? Life goes on. <laughs> Look, I don't want to see a full-length Nintendo Direct being announced as much as all of these people who have been begging for it along the way. But there's so many other things right now that I care about. Just see every single podcast so far, and you'll listen to a whole bunch of things that I care about that were not. I want a full-length Nintendo Direct. I could go on years right now, to be honest, not having a full-length one. Um, and, I mean, yeah, that's assuming that announcements still keep coming out along the way. Whether it's, hey, suddenly Paper Mario the Origami King's a thing. Cool. Here's a 25-minute little video about stuff. Here's a little 8-minute piece about a bunch of third-party games. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, speaking of a 25-minute mini Nintendo Direct, we should talk about one of the games that was announced in that one in March. Because next up is the review of Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics.